Crockett Cup officially, I suppose, now underway. We are in Dallas. Finally. Yeah, finally we're in Dallas, I believe. Oh, and we'll talk about that and more very, very shortly. But first, of course, it's NWA, which means it's Fiona. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Good. Yeah, good. Just not long actually finished watching Powers, watching on the way home. We were meant to be recording this tomorrow, uh, but we had a, a space for uh, full today. So we're going to get it done on Tuesday uh, as time of recording. So we're going to get it done nice. Proper power day. Proper power day. It's not long dropped on the CW app over in America or over a VPN over here in the UK. Uh, Fee, it, I think this cold open was the one... I'm sure it played last week. Not necessarily the cold. It, it was very similar. If it wasn't the same one, it was very, very similar. Yeah, very similar. Very good, though, as always. These cut opens, it was basically the teams that are in the Crockett Cup itself for yeah. all the part of it. Um, what an arena, by the way. Forney, the OC in Forney is looking good. Um, I it's almost like a perfect venue for NWA, I think. It's um, any venue screams NWA. It's that one. Yeah, definitely. It it yeah, it was perfect. I thought it looked brilliant, and um, the lighting and it was great. So obviously, it was so nice. And I've written this down in my notes. It was so nice to see people ringside again and actually yeah. see the audience because obviously, when they've been doing the tapings in Tampa or wherever it's been, you've not seen the audience ringside. So it's been really really nice to see the audience, and the way the cameras and the lighting set up is. It fades as it yeah. goes up, but I know there were several hundred people there. I know people who were there, so I know it was busy. It might not look it because it's so dark, but I know that it was very, very busy there when they recorded it. Brilliant. I love that. I love the fact it was busy as well for the NWA. It's good to see wrestling yeah. in general uh, being busy itself. But before we uh, quickly, before we move on, uh, nice to see you on telly Saturday, uh, uh, Friday. <laughs> um, Someone being my know, boy. Yeah, you and your boy, lovely picture of Kevin Owens that you got with him, by the way. That was that was amazing that you said. But um, someone got slightly excited when Randy Orton come out, didn't they? That was a pop. Like, not going to lie, we did not expect to see that one. So that was exciting. It was good. It was good. Fair play. But let's, let's get rid of it. Let's get, uh, that, get talk to NWA. Um, uh, Billy back on commentary this week with, with Joe mm -hmm. and Danny. We've got entrances this week. I know. All the excitement. <laughs> It Can't contain very, myself. <laughs> it is very special, uh, NWA, when you get the entrance as well, because it does make it that little bit better. And there were full length entrances. It well. felt special. Yeah, this it, felt yeah. like a big show. Yeah. It, and I'm still disappointed it's not one big show. Don't I'm not even going to go down that. We know how I feel about it, but it did feel special. And I was kind of like, okay, this is cool. It did feel very special indeed. It had a big event feel onto it. And it, it started uh, Daisy Kill Talos and Vampiro. Uh, mm. against the immortals um how good did they look uh, do you know what i i wrote this down and i'm not as we know we've been a bit up and down on daisy kill and talos i've decided i like daisy kill now yeah. I, I i'll be honest with you this match for me uh kind of again yeah i kind of agree now i've gone off the fence i'm starting to warm to daisy kill and talos. yeah um yeah. but also what, what got me onto this was just how quick these big guys were i mean they not they're big and you know powerful and strong, but they can move. Yeah, they yeah. can probably move faster than I could in that ring. That's for sure. <laughs> I mean, they were really you know, it, it took me away. I was, I was literally watching it on the train home this evening because when I knew we were jumping on and doing this tonight, I, I, I watched it on the way home. Um, I was sort of mentioned Daisy Kill took the brunt of the early the early goings in this match, and he took the brunt. and the brunt is the the the, the right word, man. He took a <laughs> doing. Let's be honest. Okay. A bit of a hammering before we got the, the obviously that got the chop on that chop on Daisy by Kratos. Like that was like a chop hair down the world. I was like, oh my god! Like thought he broke him in half. It was like a gun being shot. Uh, that yeah, shot. I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of it. And we finally did get the tag, and when obviously Talos got in, that's when it kind of. I would say it's, it didn't really slow down as much as I thought it was because I've gone back to saying about both how these guys can move. And Talos was flying into the corners with splashes. So it yeah. was deceiving. And I, I, obviously, we've seen these before. And we have to say, oh, he's quicker than you think. But when he's coming against another guy, I mean, he was throwing Kratos around like he wasn't. Yeah, and Kratos is not a small chap. No, he was throwing him around like bum weight. Um, at some point on this. Um, it didn't take long or near the end for Vampiro to decide to try and get involved. 
Sneaky Vampedal. Very sneaky. He did uh, end up putting the foot on the ropes when uh, later on in the match. And then he did try to do a, some sort of dive. On the I don't know what that was. It looked good. Didn't hit a target, but it looked good. <laughs> it, it looked good. Um, yeah, as you say, didn't quite. I think it was Odison, I think it was. I think it was. that He was, he trying, was trying. Yeah, trying being the operative word. He did get a, a back full of canvas instead. And then something that Odison was hitting throughout these matches was his uppercuts. And crossed or they're my... lethal, <laughs> absolutely lethal. He, he nearly took <laughs> easy kills head off with the yeah. one end, um, which obviously they get the win uh, from there. They did pick up the victory, um, the uh, the immortals uh, in that after that. But I mean, it was a great that set the tone to what I feel was such. It was a we said about it was it, a fast paced episode. I think yeah. a real fast paced episode. And do you know what? It's also it. it Obviously, because sometimes when you because it was all tag matches, and sometimes we love tag matches that we do, but sometimes you do need that bit in the middle to, to break it up. I felt no, you don't. <laughs> what I was literally just gonna say just then, it you didn't on this episode. You actually yeah. didn't. All the matches were so good in so many for so many different reasons, and, and we'll get into it in a minute. Um, the next match, anyway, that is. And obviously, they got on the mic at the end with Carl, and, and they sort of said, you know, they're going to win. Basically, they're going to win the Crockett Cup. It's just... Yeah, and they're up against the winners of BFT or and uh, Max and Jadias, who are in yeah. the next another quarterfinal, which will be next week's episode, yeah. I believe. The next quarterfinals will be next week, in, indeed. We'll get into those matches as well. Um, then they announced that she was coming to the ring that uh, Rekha Khan had signed with NWA. Yeah, that was exciting. And the other little, the other little Easter egg they put in there was that they were potentially working on a women's Crockett Cup. Well, hallelujah, because if this match was anything to go by. Now, we were a bit sceptical because we said we kind of seen this two or three times already. and They upped their game this time. Oh, they geez. really upped their game. Jeez. I mean, it was, uh, do you know what I, will, what I love? Because we always wax lyrical about the NWA women's division. They gave this match a lengthy bit of time. Yeah. And just in case anyone's wondering, it's Rekha Tahaka oh, and yeah. Tiffany Nieves yeah. against yeah. Ruthie G. And La Rosa Negra, yeah, just as quite... number one contendership for the Women's World Tag Team Championship. Yeah, we didn't quite get to who it was, and that was my apologies, because we went straight in. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I was always, because we said we'd seen it, they'd been, I think, twice before. This was the rubber match. It was one all. Yeah. Was rubber match. And we were kind of thinking, oh, you know, we've seen this twice. This was like a, this felt like a match that I'd never seen before, even though I'd seen it twice. Yeah. So good, and as I said, they gave it a great. I mean, this was the longest match on the show uh, by by quite a distance, to be honest. Which mm. is great because they're showcasing one of the strongest women divisions in wrestling. I don't care if anyone says NWA has got one of the strongest women divisions in in wrestling, and some of the greatest up and coming youngsters that are already kind of at a level at NWA that you would see elsewhere winning championships as well. These four for me were, were brilliant. Um, in this, there was some. I did like the um, the, the sort of spinning backbreaker that Tiffany Nieves gave uh, during the end of that. Uh, yeah, a very very strong on that. And after a lengthy time, there was a big old power bomb. I reckon. There was a big old power bomb. I have literally just written in my notes, huge power bomb. Exactly like right. poor Ruthie did not stand a chance with that one. No, I mean she really didn't, unfortunately. It... And with Rekka being as tall as she is, it's a long way to go. Yeah, well, Rekka's six foot. So yeah. you know, and, and she wasn't exactly being dropped down, she was being launched. Slammed, proper yeah. slammed down. I mean that you know, I think even the crowd shuddered a bit during that because it was so powerful and, and strong. And, and so they got the win. So they'll be taking on the, the, the king bees. Now, what we do know is obviously this is all taped in one sitting, so to speak. So we do know that that match has kind of already taken place, it's just not yeah. Well, all of the matches have taken place, but that match was obviously on the same night uh, as everything else. So we'll see that probably in a few weeks. But they take on the King Bees, and I don't know, you know, they could be in trouble here, the King Bees. I, if they don't beat the King Bees, I reckon it won't be long before we see the tag belts on them, though. They, they, they look like champs to me. Yeah, absolutely. They, they really do. You could see, I mean, I could see in this match, they, they looked big time i mean there's no they doubt. did they really did um but again kudos to nwa for your women's division because it you know we always we actually recall about it but it always it, they 
there's never like a bad, bad match there. There's always... I don't know. It just impresses me every single time we watch it. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just wish that more, I mean, you know, I know we said this before and I know we get in trouble because we say about having, you know, people being able to see it worldwide and how people, you know, potentially missing out on bookings over in this country because you can't see the talent. And that is, and it's simply one of the reasons why I want people in the UK to be able to watch it because they are missing out. So they can see. So they can Absolutely. see so they can exactly see. how good the women's division is. It, I mean, the, the men's division is exactly bad, even don't get me wrong, but it, 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 that match was just so good. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Um, and well done, NWA. It was such a great match. Um, this week, we didn't have no cooking with Carlson this week. <laughs> we didn't, but we did have a little territories roundup, which I actually really like. I think it's a good yeah. idea. Mm. Um, to find out what's happening in all the territories and the upcoming shows and who's going to be there for the fans, I think it's a great move. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So it's good to it's kind of for me. I like having that every kind of episode. What's going on? Who's yeah. going to be where? It's a so good that's round kind up. of cool. I like that. It is a good roundup. Um. We uh, speaking of territory, the talking territory series will be back on Thursday. We we had a great chat last week with Sam Bill. Uh, that will be dropping uh, this week. So keep a lookout on that, Sam's. Uh, I, I said he's like Matt Riddle. He looks a lot like Matt Riddle. Speaks a lot like Matt Riddle. Um, but uh, yeah, it, the territory roundup is great. It gives you an idea of what's coming up, and as you say, who's going to be uh, on the show. So keep a lookout for that when you watch NWA. And get down to the territories as well. Get down to Crossfire. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You've got what Tennessee. You've got Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. You've got two in Tennessee actually yeah. you've got Chicago and um, you're gonna have to fight the world down in Florida as well so if you're over in any of those states then go and check them out absolutely JCP no, that's it JCP yeah. yeah promotions don't forget to check them out check all the territories out they've got some great stars down there you can listen to them on here when when they come on here but it's better to see them in person because you're in for a treat for sure and you'll get to see if you go down to watch crossfire you get to see the page sisters two of the best women uh in, in the business at the moment right now killing it both as a promoter and as a wrestler I mean, the fact that they're promoting uh, 20 years old is ridiculous anyway um let's get on to the main event seven six now Interesting controversy and with some ramifications as well. So, mm. who was expecting Silas Mason and Kerry Morton versus the country gentleman? We did not get. We did not. Apparently, Silas has not been medically cleared to compete. So, obviously, that meant that Kerry had to get another partner. So, in steps, Alex, who I didn't recognize when I saw him from the back because he has bleached blonde hair now. <laughs> blonde hair. But Joe Kazana did want a buy at this point. He was like, you know, we was, Silas was the one and, and you know, and, and Kerry was like, I'll, I'll lay down for you guys. And AJ Kazana got on the mic and was like, well, everyone's come in to see us kick your ass. So we're going to come and do that. Um, I'll get into the ramification of Alex Taylor um, and, and what that means for him going forward at the end of this match. But I, I thought this match was a bundle of fun as a main event. I love this. Like, <laughs> you can't go wrong with these guys in a ring with each other. You really can't. I think it as really much as we like to book Eddie. Um, can I just say, by the way, those jackets, love those red and silver jackets. Beautiful. I would like one, please. Danny Deals. Get those uh, seven six jackets. Um, I think what I liked about this, and the commentators played a great role in this, was they were saying about legitimate heat because you had obviously Ricky Morton and Joe Kazana there. Mm -hmm. They're kind of taking that into the territories as well, into the Joe Kazana yep. promotion. They're taking this kind of feud with them. And I think that really helps because when you're building the territories as well, and the fact that you can present what's going on on NWA at the same time. Yeah. Um, brilliant. And we know that we know that the Mortons have been at JCP before. I've seen them in JCP. So it's it's quite good that they can they can kind of transfer them from one promotion to the other, which is which is nice to see. Absolutely. Kind of keeps the story going and stuff as well, which is cool. 
Yeah, exactly that. And they, they, they was, it was such a fun, again, a really fun tag match. Showcasing all four ta- all four talented. And they're all talented in many different ways. The Kazanas are quite, they're big and brute and, and stuff like that. And the Southern Six are more, I always say, slimy and arrogant and stuff, the way they come across. But they Sneaky. Back- sneaky. Yeah, that's me <laughs> seem sneaky. But they can back it up as well. I mean, they're both extremely talented, Kerry and, and Alex. Um the Southern Six did pick up the victory, though. Um, there was a they bit did. where um, they booted AJ into the ring post, hit the six speed, and picked up the uh, win. And they go on to the semi final matchup as well. And mm, and that'll be interesting. It's either against the looks at Kill or Knox and Murdoch. So that'll be that'll be fun. I know who I want to see them go up against. You want to go see him up against Knox and Murdoch again, right? Oh, of course. A little <laughs> rematch after the, the the cage match, which um, which Kerry was quite clearly taunting them over at the end, because they were yeah. back on the mic again and he was basically like, look, we beat your ass in a cage, we'll do it again. <laughs> we will see. We but will... that's after they get past looks at kill though, isn't it? So that we still got that and to go first. That's right, and that's what we're going to get on to next week, looks at kill. Knox and Murdoch, we have got Blunt Force Trauma against Max and Judas. Now, what we were meant to have next week was Joe Alonso defending the title against Alex Taylor. Because yeah. Alex Taylor is in the Crockett Cup now, he forfeits that match, and Joe Alonso will go against a mystery opponent next week. It could be anyone. I'm almost a little bit disappointed. Because I, I thought I thought Alex versus Joe would be a banger. To be honest with you, I was looking forward to watching that. It would have been. I mean, they announced because if you if you was watching, obviously when you was watching it at the start, it said uh, Alex because they were running through it. They always give you what's coming up next week mm-hmm. during the, a couple of times during the broadcast, and up until the main event, it was Alex Taylor against Joe uh, Joe Alonso. I was going to say Joe Kazana, uh, Joe Alonso. Um, and then once Alex Taylor stepped in the ring and done it, it's now mystery opponent or a question mark. So we'll find out. Who I know. Is. I'm. I'll, I'm intrigued to see who it was, who it will be. I <clears throat> kind of wish I had a bit of a heads up because I'm like main roster. Who's really left? Who's not in the cup? Who's who's not in the cup? That's like a main roster member now. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I know, this is the thing. Maybe Spencer Slade. He's also been signed to a contract as well, if you've seen social media as well. The other yesterday, I think he's been signed, which is good. And so has Mark Hover. We didn't get to say, I don't think we said that last Mm -hmm. week. I'm sure if we mentioned it, Natalie Mark Hover. So yeah, I suppose it could be one of the someone from a tag team that's been knocked out already, I guess. Could be. It really could. Well, if it's someone like Jack Stain or or the the what Slightly if, unknown Baron von Storm. Say, what if it's Baron von Storm? He could come in and take a shot at the uh, at the championship the next week. Isn't that it? would be wild, actually. About, Although we've yet to see him in the ring, we don't know who Baron von Storm actually is. So, don't either. No, we don't. Or could it be a returning Colby Carino for a rematch? Oh yes, please. That yeah, would be I'm good. Like, a rematch yeah. for them. That would be would, really we, good. We would love a rematch with that. I mean, that that's you know we haven't seen Colby. I don't think since he's lost. The champion. No, so it's yeah, I'd quite like to see Kobe back in that ring. It would be indeed, but it was just saying about uh, Natalia Markova also. But NWA giving out contracts and multiple year contracts now that mm. doesn't really set the state of where the NWA actually are now that they can offer yeah. multiple year. That's got to be a step in the right direction. Oh, completely, completely. Like it's great for these guys, particularly I think now. With the fact it's not just power, you have got all the promotions, you've got all the territories now. So there's a lot of scope for them to move around and travel and defend belts in other states. And it's actually probably quite an exciting time, to be honest with you, Um, if you are on the roster. Now, I don't know how much of the roster there is on contract or who's still not on contract, but um, I think it's now probably more contract heavy than not. Yeah, I think so. And it's, it is great to see, honestly. It, it really gives you an idea of where the NWA are, are as a company now that they can offer not just you know multiple-year contracts to their talent. So that really does keep that core base 
under contract, which is vitally important for the NWA, especially yeah. as they move forward into the future. Um, so great news in that sense. Um, a great episode, a great way to start the Crockett Cup proper. Obviously, we've had it. Yeah, before. like I said at the start, I felt like <laughs> it was a big occasion, and to see that cup at the start on screen, I was just like, oh. It Give was. me the fuzzies. It was it, good it, to see it. So it was really good to see it. What we'll do for you is we'll get the we'll get our diaries another day. We've got some other shows to to record this week, so we'll get what we're doing in diary. The only thing that I do want to mention is the fact that this week, obviously, it's my birthday, which I'm saying every podcast that I do. It's your birthday will be my birthday. Yeah, yeah. On a special. Was on, it your fiftieth? <laughs> Uh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> uh, it, it's actually not. It's my 40th, everybody. Right? Sorry, sorry. I, can't, I can't count. What can I say? What can you say? Yeah, but actually on my birthday, we finally got the interview that we've been waiting so long to, to have. It. I'm so excited. I, I, we haven't got him for long. We've got him literally for 30 minutes, but by God, are we going to milk him for that 30 minutes? The man himself, Mr. Aaron Stevens, will be talking. I'm so excited. You better uh, wear the jacket, Aaron, and the glove. We can certainly ask him uh, if he puts that on. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to interview Aaron. It's going to be such a fun show on Thursday. But he will be singing happy birthday to me because I'll make sure he does. And I want him to do it in his way of blunt force trauma. Oh, dear uh, God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but get ready I don't think he knows what he's letting himself in for I don't think so either because he doesn't even know that yet we'll talk to him before he comes on there um, but we're looking forward to that so much on Thursday and thanks Aaron for uh, taking up the time uh, to come and speak to us on Thursday we're looking forward to it the feet week one Crockett Cup proper mm. in the books uh, let's I mean we've got some talking territory stuff coming up as well but let's do this again next week shall we I think that would be a wonderful idea in that case guys she has been Miss Fiona Lochran, I have been your host, Adam Cousins, and you have been watching the NWA Power Review on the Hit in the Town Buckle podcast. And until we do this again next week, everybody, buckle down, stay safe, goodbye. 